Welcome back to another edition of All Chiefed Up. I am Steve and I am here with Mike. Tomorrow is Red Friday, Chiefs Kingdom, the first home game. Granted, it's a preseason game and it's against the Washington Commanders, but we're going to be in attendance. We're going to be there. We are going to be there. And today we're going to talk about the top five things that we're looking for in that preseason matchup. Hey guys, if you're excited about the game and you think Carson Wentz sucks, go ahead and give us a like down here at the bottom of the video and be sure to subscribe. Yes, sir. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. We are on the road to 5K by the end of the season now. So we hit our 1K. We set a lofty, lofty go, uphill battle, but we can get there with your help. So make sure you're telling all your friends and family where to find good content on YouTube and hit that bell so you get notifications when we come out with new stuff. The Commanders. I don't like the name. I don't think I love the Commanders. It's the Washington wish, Redskins. We're, we're I, playing the Redskins. <laughs> yeah, I like the Redskins name. I know it's PC crowd, but come on. Look, anyway. They were, given, they were given, you know, the good graces to use that name, just like the Chiefs were. Everybody leave them alone. It's the Redskins. I know. I hate the Commanders name. But anyways, the uniforms are kind of cool. That's about all I know about them. So we're just going to jump right in. Top five things we're going to be watching Saturday versus the Commanders. Uh, number one has to first and foremost be the offensive line. They looked pretty bad against the Bears on game number one. Did they not? Absolutely. It's the backup, guys. You don't want to go ahead and throw first team into that because for the most part, they look good. But I would like to see the first team offensive line not miss any assignments. And I would like to see some improvement on the footwork of Orlando Brown Jr. on his pass blocking. We all know he's a hell of a rush blocker. No, no qualms about that. But we want to see better footwork and not let any of those speed guys get around him. Right. I'm kind of curious to see what he's going to look like versus Chase Young. If Chase yes. Young gets to play, um, that's a good test right there. That's a speed rusher. Um. I kind of want to see what Wiley does. Are they going to start Wiley at right tackle again? He missed a few blocks against the Bears. He got Mahomes drilled in the first right. series. So I'm kind of curious if they're going to go that route. It looks like uh, Roderick Johnson played a little right tackle, but he didn't look good. Kennard kind of struggled against the Bears. So I'm kind of curious who they're going to have at right tackle. And whoever it is, I want to see them play a lot better than they did last week. Okay, so number two thing we want to watch this weekend. Sky Moore and Isaiah Pacheco getting more reps with the first team. I think Sky was the only... First team wide receiver besides Juju that didn't get to catch a ball from Mahomes. Um, so I'd love to see him and Mahomes build a little bit more on their chemistry. And then Pacheco, very excited to see his – he had one run and one pass catch, but they both pretty impressive, actually. I think the run, if he could have broke it back to the left a little bit, we had talked, he probably could have broke that off for a lot. Um, but, yeah, he looked really good on the catch. Excited to see him more with the first team. Right. I mean, of course, Clyde's going to get that first carry. He's going to be out there on the field first, but I would like to see more of what Isaiah Pacheco is going to do because we are already know what Clyde has to offer when he's healthy and on the field. So I'd really like to see how Pacheco is going to react to this uh, NFL defense. That brings us on to number three. We want to see, speaking of wide receivers, consistency. So Justin Watson, we thought, played himself into the number five spot against the Bears, and we thought Fountain was nipping on his heels at number six. So can Justin Watson, and with all the hype that he gained himself, can him and Fountain continue that consistency and build on that going into the commanders? Right. So there would be nothing more just – draining the air out of everybody that if Justin Watson came out and dropped a bunch of balls next game, because he's got everybody hyped over him and he solidified himself at wide receiver five right now. So if he can come out and be consistent and show that he can do this week after week, we're going to feel confident in that. And so are the coaches and he's going to be that number five wide receiver. Number four, we're just going to talk about the defensive line. We talked about the offensive line. I think the defensive line now, we got to build on what we did against the Bears. I thought the first rip they actually had, they looked really good. They got a three and out. We want to see how George Karloftis progresses. Does he continue to get better? Does Dunlop build on, you know, just getting more reps? Can Frank Clark control the run game a little bit better? He got washed out of some plays against the Bears. Are they going to do the, the three defensive ends along with Chris Jones on the front? Are we going to see more looks like that from Spags? Um, Matt Dickerson, he had a pretty good game against the Bears late in the game. Can he build on what he did? Um, Stallworth, he looked pretty good. Can he build? Uh, Saunders looked good. So, yeah, we would just want to see more consistency from the defensive line. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, we want to see if they maintain that same kind of pressure they had in the first game. I want to see if Karloftis keeps that same energy. Is that going to be something we see every week from him? Uh, but, yeah, I definitely want the pressure. We want a defense that's going to go out and get three and outs and not just the bend, don't break crap that we're used to. We want to see them get out, smack people in the mouth, get them off the field, and let Mahomes do his thing. So the last thing we kind of want to look for, and this is number five, 
uh, we had a lot of players that did not perform well week one against the Bears, and they struggled. And they need to show more, I believe, because I believe they're not all not necessarily on the cut line, but there is a few on the cut line. And then there's a couple guys we thought that would be fighting for jobs, and they just did not have a good showing. And I'll start it off with Darian Kennard. I thought Darian Kennard had a golden opportunity to come in and win this right tackle job outright before camp was over, and he may well do it. But in the first game against the Bears, he looked not that great. He was getting bull rushed to death. Um, he just did not look very good. Don't you agree? Like, it's just, it was weird. Yeah, so Darren Kennard, I mean, the guy's an oak tree. You normally don't push Darren Kennard around. So I'm wondering if he's just having an off day. Is he having trouble adjusting to a different game speed? Could it be that he was playing with a third and fourth team and there just wasn't good guys around him, so it was making it more difficult? Uh, there's lots of different things that could play into that. But we do have to see him make a step up in this commander's game. The times that he does get to be in there, he needs to step it up and show that he can be the starting right tackle because he he has a chance to because while he didn't perform well last week, if he were to come out and have another week outing against the commanders, that's a perfect opportunity for Kennard to be like, hey, I'm right here. I can take this spot. Yeah, staying on the uh, the guys that need to show more on the offensive line. I think Roderick Johnson, there was so much hype about Roderick Johnson and he didn't have a good showing against the bears either. So I'd love to see him come in and do a little bit more. Um, there's a couple backup guys, you know, you're looking at Caliento, Allegretti didn't play too bad. I just feel like our offensive line in general, second, third, fourth teams have to play better. Right. And some other guys that need to step it up and show some more this week are going to be Rojo dude. You have to, man, because you're really riding that line, man. You might get cut. Uh, so get out there. And even if you're out there with the, you know, the third and fourth teams and that offensive line might not be the greatest at the time, you still got to make some things happen, man. Work your way into that second and first team, and then you can get a better offensive line and show your game. But you can't be missing blocks and things like that because that's that's a surefire way for Andy Reid not to put you in the game. Yeah, and Rojo needs to show more burst. He needs to show more. We know he's got it. He's fast. But he just did not look explosive. He didn't look sure of himself. And that may be the mental aspect we've been talking about. So learn that playbook, dig in this week, and go out there and make the most of it. I'm um, staying on running backs. Uh, Derek Gore has to show something this week. He had a monstrous, crappy game. Like it was horrible. Like he fumbled. He, I don't know. Like Derek Gore, he dropped passes. Yeah, yeah, he just yeah, looked rough. Several. Yeah. Derek Gore didn't look good at all. If he wants to hang on to a spot on this team, he's got to show out because. Uh, he got himself in a hole. He dug a big hole for himself in the first week. So he's going to have to come out and be pretty impressive for for me to even think that he's going to make the 53 man. Right. Uh, a couple defensive backs that need to show up a little more this week. Naze Johnson needs to show a little more. Um, he really didn't do nothing bad, but he didn't do nothing great either. Like he needs to stand out when you've got 15 DBs and you're going to condense it down to like six or seven, you've got to start standing out. And that leads me to my last one, Jalen Watson. He looked okay for a seventh round pick. But just okay for a seventh round pick doesn't mean that you're going to contribute with this team. You know what I'm saying? Like people in the comments are like, well, he looked pretty good for a seventh round pick. Well, okay, but we don't need seventh round pick talent. Like you got to come in and you got to produce. I've noticed that Jalen Watson's a really touchy subject with a lot of Chiefs fans, or maybe they're not Chiefs fans. Maybe they're Jalen Watson fans that get on the comments. But even on the video where we evaluated him and everything, Everyone gets so hostile about it. Like, he's not slow. And, you know, we're not saying he's slow. We're just saying he don't play at a fast game speed, that he's lackadaisical. And we've seen that. Spags has seen that. I mean, we're not making this stuff up. And then, of course, after the game, this last time, we said the same thing. Like, he's he was out of position a lot. He did make some good plays. He had a pass breakup. But he was out of position a lot. He's got a lot to improve on. We're not saying he's a bad player. He's got a lot to improve on. But I'm with you. I think you got to see more from him, and you got to see more from Nazi Johnson, just for them to maybe not be on the practice squad and actually be on the 53 man. Uh, we had mentioned Nasir Greer, and we both liked the way he looked the other day. I would love. I don't think he's struggling, but again. There's so many there. They need to separate themselves. He needs to build on his performance because he looked really good against the Bears when he was given a shot. I'd love to see him come out and do something this week as well, maybe propel him to the forefront of the safety room or the corner room, whichever way they're going to run him. They're kind of using him and Naze. He's kind of the same, a little safety, a little corner. Um, but let's get to wide receivers that need to show more. We spoke about this too. Uh, Cornell Powell, he had a big drop. You was not impressed with his gameplay against the Bears. You said he needs to show more. He definitely needs to show more. And neither one of us were impressed with Josh Gordon either. Josh Gordon showed a few moments of getting separation, and he was open a few times. 
he should have been able to probably have caught those two on the sideline if the throws would have been a little better. But he just doesn't look like he's playing with enough fire and intensity right now. He needs to look like he's got some urgency about him. Well, I went back and watched, and Josh Gordon was actually getting pretty decent separation all day. Uh, but I'm starting to wonder if Josh Gordon's play style just don't really fit into an Andy Reid offense. Because, I mean, the routes that he was designed to run and everything, it always got him in these situations where I don't think Josh Gordon needs to be at, like trying to toe tap on the sideline or things like that. And it's like, I feel like Josh Gordon is more, at this point in his career, he's going to be the guy that just makes a contested catch in the middle of the field because he's bigger or, or something like that. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of that right now, but he's definitely got to show some more. Yeah, I think Josh Gordon, he's got to, he's got to, He's got to have a sense of urgency. That's what I want to see from Josh Gordon. And then, like we said, pal, he's right there on that line. Like, I feel like he could just, like, flip a switch and be really good. But it's just like he just can't get it together. So, uh, I'd love to see those two. And other than that, I think that about covers it. There's a few linebackers I'd like to see step up as well this week, too. I want to see a little bit more from Mike Rose, a little bit more from Jermaine Carter. I'd I'm like really to see Leo uh, in second and first team just to yeah, see but- how he can do. Agreed. I want, I'm going to see Leo get a little bit more snaps with the first and second teams. Uh, he looked a little timid every once in a while when he's on the field, I thought. So I'd like to see him kind of grasp it and get in there and just play with a little bit more like recklessness. Yeah, I would like to see a little bit more out of the edge rushers that we didn't get to see a whole lot of. I'd like to see Josh Kane, though. I would like to see uh, Malik Herring get more snaps because there's definitely some room in that in that defensive end room to uh you know have another guy that can come in and contribute right so with only three preseason games this this year i'm curious are we going to see more starters this week or week three like i'm not for sure how they're going to do it they usually don't want to play them the last week but then again now that you got to buy you know because you only got three i'm kind of curious so maybe all these backups we're looking at might be this week and then next week you'll see the starters more so the backups that we're talking about right now this is their chance to shine because they're not going to get that extra fourth game where they get basically four quarters to do it chiefs kingdom if you're excited for the first home game of the season make sure to hit that like button also if you have not subscribed yet get down there and hit that subscribe button as well hit the bell so you get notifications to let you know when we have new content Also, we're on the road to 5K, 5K before the season's over. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends and family where to find Good Chiefs content on YouTube. And as always, we appreciate you tons. Thank you very much. And we will see you next time. See ya.